Welcome to the Herland Report, sociologist and uh, excellent journalist Lars Jorgensen. Um, you are from Denmark and one of the many voices nowadays that speak about these issues uh, that are so appalling. The tendencies we've seen in the Western media that we have gone from being a democratic structure to become an illiberal authoritarian structure with many of the totalitarian tendencies that we saw in the 1930s in Germany as well. And we're talking about Syria. We're talking about the perception of Syria's president Bashar al-Assad and the blatant demonization that has been going on for many years now on his behalf. How was it that you came to the conclusion that this is propaganda? Yeah, well, I started, uh, um, you know, actually not in Syria, but uh, in, in what happened in Europe and what happened in the European Union, what happened to Greece and how the media misrepresented what happened. Uh, and. Uh, uh, I was shocked uh, to learn what actually, uh, I mean, how false the media were. Um, uh, so, uh, and when Greece was, uh, I, th I think we should say, killed as a nation economically in 2015 in the summer, I, I began following events uh, in Syria and, uh, and, and I, I knew where to look, uh, what kind of sources I could trust. And uh, so I was suspicious and very uh, prepared to to learn things, but uh, I've had also been, you know, um, been uh, been experiencing the very very uh, systematic propaganda on Syria. So uh, I had no agenda to find out. I only wanted to find out what was true, and this is what I always, you know, strive to to try to find out exactly what to uh, to understand what happened so i can be very firm in my statement about it and i i don't uh, you don't hear me say uh, much about uh, Sierra Leone or um or wonder or, uh, i haven't i haven't uh, studied them much so i, I you know uh, I study, and, and when I've finished, I begin speaking about it. Uh, and uh, I just want to be very certain uh, and, and, and not risking coming with half the truth or even lies, because they are deadly. Mm. So it's very, very important for me. And, uh, and, and probably that was the motivation for me, to go on in Syria. Uh, because, you know, when you just say, oh, this is not true, uh, and then the suspicion went, how much is not true? And I just had to follow it. I, 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 I usually say it's like a, an ethical obligation. There's no money for it, uh, for me in it. I mean, the, when people ask me, why do you do it? I mean, uh, I've also been involved in having an economics book published in Denmark in the spring from a very great uh, American e economist uh, on, on modern uh, money theory. Uh, mod uh, and, 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 and people, you know, came, okay, last this is uh, sensible. What about Syria? What are you doing in, about Syria? And I say, I have children. Uh, and I, I, I can't. I, I, I know how much, impor how important parents are for children, and we are we are talking about half a million killed uh, people in Syria, on lies, uh, and this. Uh, so um, so I you know uh, I, I I try to 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 figure out who to trust, and it's very difficult uh, for people who have jobs. You know, uh, watch the, watching the news in the evening, they have no chance of finding out what is really going on. They have, they cannot imagine uh, the uh, the orchestration about this. How big it is! Uh, I mean, we are talking hundreds of millions of dollars in propaganda. Okay, uh, we have the white helmets. They're financed by the Western governments. They are on the the their budgets. Uh, uh, it's 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 right in the open. We have. Uh, uh, all kinds of private organizations uh, saying they are uh, independent, but they are funded, uh, and 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 very very professional um, pro uh, public relations firms go into this. They recruit recruit uh, people, and you know, uh, when, when one of I saw uh, um, an article where they said, what 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 do we 
what are we searching for when we are you know recruiting people and they say you don't have to know anything about uh, the middle east uh, in syria you don't uh, even have to speak uh, arabic what, what what we really could use is that you have you know access to the big media so if you write about it you can have your things in within a week perhaps we have the information for you this is how it's done uh, so this is so corrupt that the, the people cannot imagine it and um so we have this uh, situation where um, the Western people uh, who are, you know, perhaps against neoliberal politicians uh, uh, are actually helping the neoliberal politicians, mm -hmm. uh, killing people in Syria uh, instead of, uh, you know, I think it's, it's fair to say that the... Uh, uh, the Ba'ath Party in, in Syria is a kind of social democratic party. They have a, an agenda of free health, uh, uh, free education, uh, you know, social rights. Uh, uh, so um, this is very social democratic. And, 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 and therefore it's, uh, it's, it's, it's strange to say the least that we have um, Western so-called leftists, I don't know, we could talk about that in, in, in Europe more anymore, but, you know, they are uh, supporting terrorists, uh, extremists, uh, Islamists, uh, uh, funding them, training them, bombing for them. Uh, we have seen many examples uh, where, where NATO go in and bomb when ISIS is in trouble. We have, uh, yeah. it, and, and, and it's uh, what I find to be so strange is I remember the election in Syria in 2014 and um, President Bashar al-Assad uh, got, I think, around 88% or something like that of the, of the votes. And just a few minutes later, John Kerry is already on the air saying it's an illegitimate uh, uh, election. Like, who is he to try to decide what the whether the election, first of all, w and how did he know that after just a few minutes after the election finished? Secondly, who is he? How uh, is his opinion all of a sudden supposed to be valid? in a country that's half the globe away from the United States. When was it that we lost completely the respect for national borders and sovereign states? Is if anyone was to decide who is to rule in Syria, it's obviously the Syrian people. And when you look at who supports Bashar al-Assad, you find that the Christian minority, for example, the minority we obviously do not care about at all. Those are the people, the, the different minorities, the Shia minorities, even a, a lot of Sunnah Muslims are the ones that are being slaughtered by these, I would say, un-Islamic groups. Even the Quran says you should not kill another Muslim and there's so I mean what is this are these terrorist groups even Islamic I wonder many times so the complete lack of understanding and then to say uh, uh, Bashar al-Assad represents the kind of pan-Arabic thinking uh, that became so popular both Saddam Hussein uh, Bashar al-Assad's father Hafez and we also saw both uh, Mubarak and Abdel Nasser and we also had uh, to a large degree in 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 Libya Muammar Gaddafi they all supported this kind of thinking of a more I wouldn't say moderate Muslim because a Muslim is a Muslim but in the West we say a moderate Muslim and like like a system that is more likened to our, our kind of secular system which means that everyone who lives in Syria is a Syrian he's a citizen of Syria whether he belongs to the Shiite group whether he belongs to Christian whether he's a Jew whether he's whatever he is a Sunni Muslim whatever he is he's a part of the Syrian based on nationality as opposed to the Islamist view which is you either you are an Islamist and and uh, and interpret the uh, the religion the way we do or we kill all of you so so why do we support the intolerant groups and we go against those who voice for the moderation and the national respect for every ethnic group 
It's it's easy to answer because they have an agenda, and the agenda is the neoliberal agenda of you know uh, uh, killing the nation. Uh, we we want uh, no borders. We want uh, free access to capital. We want. Uh, it to be possible to have uh, make money on everything in your country uh, down to water uh, and and these uh, people we're talking about these uh, whether it was uh, in Russia when when uh, the american uh, economist went and destroyed uh, russia after the after the fall uh, of the uh, of the soviet union uh, they completely destroyed russia and and and, and uh, uh, Yeltsin, you know, he opened it up uh, and and and, and uh, for foreign capital, and so the Americans uh, and, and and Europeans could be very wealthy uh, going into Russia, and and not many people know that. I think it was perhaps millions who died after uh, these reforms, uh, uh, where you. You, you had no poverty before, but but after this we had uh, hunger. People died in millions. Um, and this was Russia, and then we have uh, the same pr- in uh, in Libya, very very rich country uh, in resources, and and when you have a, a, a political leader like uh, Gaddafi who said no, we won't have uh, foreign investment, we we we, we have nationalized uh, our oil industry, etc. Then he's blocking the, the the possibility for foreign investors to come and and grab the oil. That's it, and that's uh, the what the war machine is about. Go in and remove him and 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 get in either a dictator or a very uh, neoliberal kind of guy, uh, person on top of it, who who's willing to you know just uh, sell out of the the, uh, the welfare of the people. That's it. So Yeltsin was very popular uh, in in the West and he is despised uh, by the uh, Russian population. Not many know this in the West because we, it's fake news. Everything we hear basically about Russia. Uh, so um, the same thing in Yugoslavia, very, very rich uh, nation. And uh, 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 Milosevic w- w- wouldn't allow, uh, you know, uh, for, for, for capital to go in. Uh, the resources belong to the people. Uh, he had to go. Uh, and now we are in Syria and it's the same thing. Um, so it's uh, it's the same business model every time. And, and it's just... Uh, the thing is, people don't know about the, the, the other wars, how illegal they were, uh, how false they were. So, so they, they can't imagine that it's false now. And, and even, the, you know, after Iraq, we had, okay, it was a lie. He had no weapons of mass destruction. Okay, well, it was a mistake or whatever. And people just go on. The, the media is certainly not waking people up, right? So, so, so they just let you, you know the Western people go on in the uh, ignorance, mm-hmm. uh, and, and and make them uh, support uh, killing hundreds of thousands of people in Syria now. Completely illegal war, uh, completely false, completely insane, uh, and, and they are supporting and uh, and you know make all the public relations companies. Uh, they call it the Syrian agenda, Syrian support or whatever, and white helmets. Uh, they, they mobilize people to go on the street and demand that we uh, all bomb uh, in, in Aleppo, bomb Assad, etc., make a no-fly zone, which would... And we are talking about killing the Syrian people. And, and you, you said before that uh, you're not even sure that these... Uh, uh, Rebels, as they call them, uh, uh, extremists, uh, jihadists, as I will call them, uh, they're Syrians. They're not. And it, and it's interesting to to see also to which degree, which is now quite evident, uh, to which degree those uprisings, they say the people is rising up against the dictators. And, um, you know, I mean, those uprisings, how coordinated and arranged those are. And I think that's connected also back to to the Yugoslavia wars. We saw the uprising or, or, or the, the founding of the student organization at the time at the university in, in Serbia there, the Otpor, which later um, was the name was changed to Canvas. 
and, and these Serbians who, who funded that together with American funding today are some of Serbia's richest men. Mm. I think they own uh, half uh, very, very much over there. So, 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 so people are also, when they go together with the Americans, they're also given a lot of funding and you become rich from doing that. So that seems to be enticing to many, uh, probably. And you see how this Canvas organization has gone before working after the principles of Jean Sharp uh, and, and, and his book. You see how they have put up the whole system of how to create um, a popular uprising and the same, um, let's say, recipe was used in the Tahrir Square. It was the exact same Canvas organization was there funding and bringing bricks. Remember, they brought to the Tahrir Square um, uh, lorries with bricks ready for everyone to go pick each his brick and throw at somebody. And then the whole Western media were there orchestrating photographs, remember from Tahrir Square, they orchestrated fo photographs that resembled that famous photograph from the French Revolution with this lady and, and then there's a small boy on that side and some other people. It was the same thing and they all had like bricks and they were told go pick up your brick. Uh, and then you had, of course, uh, the Muslim Brotherhood leader, Yusuf al Qaradawi, who was flown in from Qatar to hold the Friday sermon prayer. It's just unbelievable. And the same groups were active in Libya, the same Canvas group active in, and we've seen them in Ukraine. We've seen them very strongly in Ukraine. Yeah. Yeah, um, I think uh, I would like to go back to uh, talking about more about the media's responsibility because I, 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 you know, in Denmark we have uh, the most terrible commentators. I mean, uh, <laughs> if people knew, uh, I, I heard uh, one say that uh, as, as a, a couple of months ago, I think it was, uh, that the um, the Sunni, Sunni Muslims in, in Syria had no place to go uh, now. And I was just uh, wondering, uh, I mean, uh, is it the 60 or is it 80? <laughs> Perhaps about 70% of the population in Syria are Sunni Muslims, right? Uh, the same for the, uh, for the army, 70%. And there's not uh, a family in Syria who has not had uh, one of their members killed, raped, uh, whatever. So they are, they're very much involved. So the idea that they are protecting, that the West is trying to protect the Syrian population, it's so organic. Uh, what's happening in Syria, and it's so organic uh, how much uh, the, the people in general are behind him. So we, perhaps we, could, we should ask, or people will ask it, but, but who is it? Who, who, who has an interest in, in you know, uh, trying to get him out? Well, the, we have the, the Muslim Brotherhood. They've been at it for 50 years, supported by the, uh, the Americans and the, uh, the, the, the British uh, MI, uh, MI6 and CIA. Uh, this is... Uh, it's reported, it's documented, uh, and uh, so it's nothing new. And so when, when the Americans decide we, we are going in now, we are helping with guns again, etc., and we're really supporting you, uh, then of course they, 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 you know, they think this is going to happen now. So, um, but if you go back to some of the, the, the main things that are repeated again and again about Syria, and, and, and I think it's very crucial to... Uh, to, uh, to, to, to talk about a bit is, um, first of all, uh, there was this uh, reporting and, and people continue to repeat it that there was uh, a, um, a distemper in Syria, that there was a revolution, a popular revolution, people wanted a set out. Uh, and this is simply not true. It's not true. And if you go to, there's a very good, uh, um, uh, he has a blog, uh, Governs, it, it's called uh, What's Left, it's, very, uh, yeah. it, it's, it's, uh, it's a very good title because, yeah. uh, I mean, he's, he's probably what's left himself, mm -hmm. uh, almost, nobody t speaks uh, mm -hmm. so, uh, so well about uh, the progressive uh, mm -hmm. understanding of Syria. Mm -hmm. he, he wrote a book, uh, it came out in the spring, uh, and it's mm -hmm. called, uh, uh, I think it's the American War in Syria, and it, something like that, but he wanted it to be called uh, Wall Street's War in Syria. Yeah. The editor wouldn't allow it. But he has been into this, and he has researched what the media actually said about uh, the so-called revolution uh, in 2011. And if you go back, uh, the Western media and Al Jazeera, uh, who's a Qatar-funded uh, media, they all reported that 
uh, no, there's there's uh, there's no popular uh, support to to throw a uh, set out. P- the people like him; they support him. Everybody knew this. Uh, and uh, if you go back uh, now, they say the thousands were on the streets against Assad. No, th- there were hundreds. Uh, we're talking about hundreds. And, and we know that the Americans uh, paid people to go on the streets. We know that most of the people going on the streets were from the uh, Muslim Brotherhood and other, uh, you know, extreme uh, Muslim uh, uh, groups in in Syria. Uh, and and they killed people. And 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 you, and you know. Th- the media go on and go on and say this, uh, that um, it was a, a very peaceful revolution uh, and uh, there were children tortured and captured and it, 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 it doesn't exist. These children doesn't exist like, you know, the barrel bombs. You, you, there's no proof of any barrel bombs. So when people ask us, what about your barrel bombs? What are you talking about? It, it doesn't exist. Uh, so, um, and, and, and this is... Um, you know, we could talk a lot about what actually happened these days. The governments have written about it. Syrian journalists have written about it. So it's, it's very well documented. And, and they point simply back to what Western media said at the time. They were reporting from Syria. Uh, so uh, everything they say about it afterwards are fabrications. Simply. There's no big ground on it. But what you've said too is that um, the Western media now is almost as bad as the Nazi system pertaining to propaganda. Has it really gone that far? No doubt, no doubt. Uh, um, let, I'll just take a, 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 another thing, you know, uh, the demonization of Assad, uh, I mean, even mentioning his, his name, I know it makes people feel bad. So it's very, very difficult to talk about these things. That's, that's the reason I wanted to talk about Milosevic first, because at least the young generation who has the experience might uh, listen to that, you know, with some distance. So uh, it's a more kind of, of cool, uh, you know, uh, way to explain what's happening. Uh, cool form of analysis. It's difficult to talk about as that. But if, um, if you go to, for instance, uh, what happened in the uh, democratic election, um, what what actually happened was that the, the, all the media, you said John Kerry was out very quickly, as, and this is a legi- legi- uh, not legitimate uh, election, right? And um, but there was uh, actually I think it was 32 uh, Western observers sent by the United Nations, I think, and and there were other uh, peace activists etc. who were there, and they said this was the most. Uh, uh, the best election they had ever covered. Some of them had tears in their eyes because they had never seen anything like this in the Western nations. You know, people actually were very, very supportive. They all voted and they all voted for Assad, right? Uh, and it's not difficult to understand, of course, in the context, because everybody knows this, uh, that uh, if Assad goes, uh, all Christians will die. Uh, the other groups, uh, of course, the Alevites, uh, <coughs> they are <coughs> targeted. Um, but what we're talking about are really, really ex- extremist jihadists uh, who will come to, to, to rule in, uh, in Syria. And you, I, I think... Uh, some of the things that uh, brought me here uh, mm-hmm. and really, you know, mm-hmm. what to believe and what not to believe. There was, uh, there are some former ambassadors mm-hmm. to Syria who's, who's saying what I'm saying now. Yeah. They, they have lived there for years. All, I've uh, seen many, many reports from different uh, clerks, uh, mm-hmm. clerics, uh, mm-hmm. uh, priests from different religions in Syria. Say it's the terrible lie that Stephen Kinzer in, in, in Boston Globe said, this is the worst uh, media coverage in American history, basically. And so, uh, but there was a, a UN peace delegation from America last year in August coming back. They went and they said we were there and we couldn't believe it because we had the demonization and the, uh, and the propaganda in our heads. But everyone we talked to confirmed the same. Assad is our man. He's helping us. He's holding Syria together. If he goes, Syria will be destroyed. The other are only terrorists, etc. We have reports from Peter Oborn, a very trusted uh, UK journalist, uh, who reported several times. He went there, reported again and again. 
The Syrians kept coming to me saying, uh, why are you supporting terrorists? And, uh, you know, it's, uh, yeah, so um, you have to pick them out. But of course, these people, they disappear uh, in, 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 in the massive uh, propaganda. It's so massive. So, yeah. And I think um, more than anything, we need in the West to have critical journalism today, especially when facing such a massive system of propaganda. And uh, regular people need to tune in to other sources of information, so at least they'll be able to hear different views. And, uh, and then we need to leave it to the Syrians to decide the fate of Syria. And then we may decide the fate of United States or the fate of the different European countries. And I think that would be a good um, uh, recipe to get some more peace in the world. And thank you very much, sociologist and uh, journalist Lars Jorgensen from Denmark for participating in this program on Syria and the Syrian president Bashar al-Assad. Thank you.